Hey guys, 2-9 Marine here, bringing you part 7 of our Portal 2 adventures. Um, if you remember from last video, myself and GLaDOS in her potato form fell from way up there, at least a couple miles down based off how long we were falling. But uh, yeah, so now we're down here and gonna try to escape. And in all honesty, this uh, this chapter and I think the next chapter are my favorite two in the game. Um, and I'll show you why when we get to it. But as you can tell, this is still a part of Aperture's laboratories. But this was their really, really old stuff, like their original um, laboratories, I guess, from way back in the day. It's way, way, way down underground. Um, so you'll see how technology has changed compared to, you know, flash screens and stuff we saw in the original, right there, or in the first few chapters, I should say. One thing I love about this game is the absolute scale to it. I think it would be awesome if uh, Valve did like a a prequel or something to this and showed this place in its prime when it was still running and people were coming here to test and all that sort of stuff. I think that would be absolutely amazing. Never been up there before. That's weird. Maybe you see something cool to find out. There's generally a reason for them having this stuff. Wonder what it is. Save me a little bit, a few steps there. It's obvious this place became condemned um, at some point in time, uh, and then they moved their laboratories closer to the surface. And the key to this part here is you gotta be quick. Um, if you're not quick, you won't be able to push this button and that button over there at the same time. Almost missed it. Mighty big door. <laughs> I still laugh at that. Such a huge, huge ass door for, for this. So 
apparently, if you fall into this water or whatever it is, it will disintegrate you. Now this room here is one of the reasons why I love this uh, this game, I mean in particular this chapter, um, because I'm just a huge fan, I guess, of the, the 50s style, you know, furniture and, the, and just the decor all around, I guess. It, uh, I don't know, I can just picture, you know, a time in the 50s you know, the Cold War type era when companies like this would be testing all sorts of stuff to try to get the one up, you know, on the Russians. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, I just, uh, I absolutely love it. That right there is Cave Johnson, the guy you just heard, uh, chat on the intercom there. I'll show you one or two of these. Um, they're pretty funny, and I'll probably put a little video out, kind of just showing the funny clips you can get of Cave Johnson. Um, just his little weird recorded messages he has. If you've cut yourself at all in the course of these tests, you might have noticed that your blood is pure gasoline. That's normal. We've been shooting you with an invisible laser that's supposed to turn blood into gasoline. So all that means is it's working. <laughs> oh, that's great. So yeah, the, there's a whole ton of these um, throughout this kind of this area here, and I plan on hopefully being able to bring a video or two kind of showing that off.
through there. And I'm gonna go down level here. Just like that. Antimatter appears to be an allergen. Did I nail fumes no matter how good they smell? Those are some wise words right there. See, that's the only way up there. You can go right here, but it doesn't lead to anything in particular besides this door, which you can't go in. They say great science is built on the shoulders of giants. Not here. At Aperture, we do all our science from scratch. No hand-holding. No, it's just the beginning of their little shield things that kill everything that they don't want going through it. something the lab boys call repulsion gel. You're not part of the control group, by the way. You get the gel. Last poor son of a gun got blue paint. <laughs> All joking aside, that did happen. Broke every bone in his legs. Tragic, but informative. Or so I'm told. Did you know repulsion gel was Aperture's first attempt to create a dietic, dietic, pretty sure I'm saying it wrong, pudding substitute. It's true, the gel is a sweeter, slightly less non-toxic form of fiberglass insulation that causes sub subsequently ingested food items to bounce off the lining of a dieter's distended stomach and out his or her mouth. For various reasons, this product was pulled from shelves. Good info there. As you can see, if you jump on the blue uh, gel, it makes you bounce. So this one's pretty easy. Gotta get a block here to open the door. The amount of bouncing you do is proportionate to how um, high you fall from, so. I can never grab that, I was supposed to. The lab boys just informed me that I should not have mentioned the control group. They're telling me I ought to stop making these pre recorded messages. That gave me an idea. Make more pre-recorded messages. I pay the bills here. I can talk about the control group all damn day. <laughs> I have a feeling I would have liked Cave Johnson. Not quite sure what this room is for. You can't really see anything out of it. For 
this next test, we put nanoparticles in the gel. In layman's terms, that's a billion little gizmos that are going to travel into your bloodstream and pump experimental genes and RNA molecules and so forth into your tumors. Now, maybe you don't have any tumors. Well, don't worry. If you sat on a folding chair in the lobby and weren't wearing lead underpants, we took care of that too. All right. I don't remember this one per se. I mean, I kind of remember it, but... Okay... Get up there, yes! So that is set. Now, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, in case you got covered in that repulsion gel, here's some advice the lab boys gave me. Do not get covered in the repulsion gel. We haven't entirely nailed down what element it is yet, but I'll tell you this, it's a lively one, and it does not like the human skeleton. Oh man, that makes me laugh. I think we will cut it here and I will be back with uh what is it video number eight thank you